We are here at the 2022 Tribeca Film Festival speaking with... Ravi Kapoor. And I am the writer, director, and producer of Four Samosas. And I am Venk Patula, and I am the lead actor and a producer on Four Samosas. Right on. Well, thank you for joining me today to talk about Four Samosas. Uh, let's just jump right into it and tell me a little bit about the film. The film, the film, the film, the Four film. Samosas is, it's about a an unmotivated Indian American rapper in Artesia, which is like the little India of Los Angeles. And he finds out that his ex-girlfriend is about to be married to somebody else and he's not very happy about it. So he decides to get together with a group of three other first time thieves and steal her dowry, which is some wedding diamonds, which reside in a safe in a grocery store. Oh. And madness in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it sounds like a fun, complex film. Uh, how did this ball get rolling on this project? Like the concept? Uh, you know, I'd always wanted to write a, a heist movie, but a, a lo fi heist movie where there weren't any massive car chases and no gunshots and no people dying and no high tech equipment drilling into um, big safes underground. Right. Um, Ocean's Eleven. But I wanted to have high stakes, high emotional stakes uh, for all the characters as well. Mm. And so I started working on this, this feature and wanted to do something set in Little India uh, within that community too. And so I started working on the script and I was writing it with Bank in mind because I thought he would make an amazing leading man. And it turns out it was true. Ah, <laughs> oh gosh, too kind. No, I mean, Ruby sent me the script and I uh, immediately connected with the character, which uh, should have been expected because at first the character was named Venk in the script. You should have known. I should have, should have been that. a giveaway. I should have, should have figured it out at that point, yeah. but I didn't because he didn't actually ask me the first time. But of course, I read it and uh, loved the character. Uh, character became Vinny, and of course, the character changes and evolves as we make the film. And you know, I felt like I could bring bring something to the role and bring an energy to it that it needed to kind of, you know, he's this vanguard trying to get these people together and you know. Uh, he make the, make something happen when he feels like he's stuck. You know, I think we can all kind of resonate with that feeling of, man, it's just not working, but you just push through, which, you know, um, does it work, does it not? And ultimately, a story about him trying to get this ex-girlfriend that he still loves, that he knows that they should be together, back together. And we kind of realized in the process that making a movie is kind of like doing a heist. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, so, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. Got, right. You, you set your sights on an, on an impossible dream. Impossible. Yeah, which is never going to happen. Never. But you still go forth and you find the people. And, and everyone specializes, you know what I mean? Everyone's right. got their, oh, they, this person does this thing and this person does this. Yeah, and, and for whatever yeah. the reasons are for joining this right. ridiculous right. adventure, they, <laughs> they come on board. And We're basically like Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Yeah, yeah. But the question is... <laughs> which one's which? That's what I'm trying to figure I'm out. I'm definitely right. for Brad Clooney. Are you Clooney? Are you definitely Clooney? Yeah. I'll take Brad Pitt. I've got the I'll right take it. Oh, so Yeah. That's a pretty dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> Two all-stars. I, I can see that you guys are, are really in love with this film and the process of making it. So let's talk about some of your acting style. How did you prepare for the role while you were reading the script and then uh, getting ready to do things on camera? Yeah, you know, we had conversations early on about the tone of the film um, because obviously... Vinny is the emotional uh, core of the narrative itself, and it's of course it's a comedy, but uh, having to find that balance between the comedic elements, but also the story itself. So we talked early on, and Ravi said something interesting, which was that it's not your job to do the laughs, you know, to focus on the comedy of it. Mm -hmm. You know, your job is to. It's almost like Vinny doesn't realize he's in a comedy, right? He's, you know, and I was like, oh yeah, that and that was like, okay, got it. Right. You know what I mean? And he's a kind of a character that takes himself a little too seriously. So it was actually really interesting while filming on set because I was so in the character of him trying to pull off this heist and he takes himself a little too seriously and everyone else is like laughing and having a great time and he almost resents that. He's almost <laughs> like, it's almost like, man, these guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, um, it was a great direction that you gave and I kind of took that and ran with it and tried to, you know, just really instill that in where he's at at every given point in time, that it's never, <laughs> like, things need to happen his way. Absolutely, yeah, and that's where the comedy comes from, for that right. character, it's, yeah. it's because he's really serious about every moment, mm -hmm. and about, the, and this, again, the stakes for him are mm -hmm. freaking high, you yeah. know, and they should be played for that, and that's where the comedy ensues from, yeah. from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafi, tell me a little bit about your uh, directorial style. What kind of director would you consider yourself working with your casting crew? Working with the casting crew specifically, I. You know, I have a very specific kind of visual and tonal vision, um, but what I do want to do is also make sure that everybody who's coming along is 
is contributing to that vision as well and is uh, there's room for play as well for everyone whether it's the actors or for the cinematographer within that very specific vision which is where the kind of crewing up becomes important and yeah. finding people who are on board and go yeah I'm prepared like the DP he was like I was saying I want to shoot it on one lens and finding a DP who goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll go on board with that. And even though there might be a little bit of fear of going, they're going to think I'm a terrible DP. Like, I don't know how to use another lens. Right. No, but in <laughs> to, in to Ravi's credit, having that vision made it really easy to find the right people. Mm. Right? Because it is so specific. So it was so clear who was right. Right. Because the people that got it, got it. And people right. that didn't, like, they, they didn't. And that right. was totally fine. Yeah. So, uh, and then and then you knew with, amongst that kind of umbrella of this vision, you, you could sense that everyone was like, oh, and then what if we did this? And, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, again, heighten that and continue right. to, you know, with, whether it's the production designer or the editor or colorist, like, what do we do to kind of play within those, within that vision? So it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it was definitely, you know, even warning the actors in terms mm -hmm. of the shooting styles. Right. And, you know, we're shooting in this 4-3 on a, on a wide lens, and it's, it's going to be a single wide lens. You're going to feel a little boxed in mm -hmm. at times, mm -hmm. and that, that's the, the visual tone and, mm -hmm. and style of the film. Mm -hmm. But within that, you know, there's room to play. And so you needed to find people who were willing to kind of come along with that journey. Oh, yes. Uh, speaking of the people going along with the journey, tell me about your producing team and the lineup of individuals that helped make this uh, automobile move. Well, you know, the first person, you know, obviously, so it was, um, um, Ravi and I started the journey together in terms of making it, um, mm -hmm. and then we brought on a Canadian uh, production company called Creative Rebel Productions, uh, two guys, Rajiv, Mike Curry, and uh, Macri, and Craig Stovall. But then really the fifth person we brought was a guy named uh, Moses, who uh, you know. <laughs> and uh, Moses was our line producer, became our co-executive producer, and helped to kind of uh, really was the backbone of getting it done, you know, from the ground support logistics point of view. Right, so and, of and then we had our executive producing uh, team, which was Marginal Media Works, who've been incredibly supportive, and that's Milan Chakraborty and Sanjay Sharma as well. And mm -hmm. so we've assembled this incredible team of producers who've all brought such important things to make this project happen. And to top it off, we recently brought on Utkar Shambhudkar to be an executive producer as well, and he's starring on the show uh, Ghost right now, and he just was a moderator uh, for the Tonys last night, and he's doing such amazing stuff for the South Asian community as a whole. Sure. He's sort of a rapper and, you know, has a lot of, really got the film, and so, yeah, all of us together are really just getting behind this, and it's amazing to have all the support. Wow, absolutely. Well, that sounds like a squad. <laughs> you said, who are the producers? <laughs> Three minutes it's later. Like this entire <laughs> country of people, it's like it took that much to get it moving. It's what it and takes. Yeah. yeah. And there's, just, there's, just, there's many more producers. There's many more producers as well. Yeah, way, so so thank you to all of them. We'll, we'll, we'll scroll all the names on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah, lot. Yeah, do, do a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be like one of those uh, Star Wars... Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's definitely a fun time talking with you gentlemen. I appreciate you stopping in today and I know that it is screening at the Tribeca Film Festival currently. Uh, where do people go to check out the film for the screenings that are coming up? Uh, yes. We got them here, we got them here, we got them here. Um, uh, well, I'll start with, uh, actually, so we had, we had three screenings. Uh, uh, we had three screenings to start, but they actually gave us a back by popular demand screening. Because uh, we're so popular. Because we sold out. <laughs> so uh, that is happening this Thursday at 6.45 p.m. in the uh, Village and, East. Yeah, at the Angelica. At the Angelica, yeah. And then the last screening is Saturday, June 18th, and that's at Sin Sinopolis, mm -hmm. and that's at 2.45 p.m. In Chelsea. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And so we're, come check us out. <laughs> <laughs> we hope our audience is able to check out Force Moses, which is screening at the festival this year. Uh, where can people go to find out more about it on their socials or website or things like that? Yeah, so just hit us up on IG at Force Samosas. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Vank Patula. And I'm pretty sure you can find Ravi <laughs> at uh, Ravi, Ravi Kapoor, Kapoor LA. LA. I'm just really bad with social media. Ravi right. just got an Instagram. He's doing really good. I'm not. I'm doing terrible. He's anyway. not. I'm, just, he's, I'm, I'm really him. proud of him. I'm trying. I'm, I'm ignoring really, him. You know, I'm there. I'm there. For Facebook. You. Yeah. Facebook <laughs> as well. Welcome <laughs> to the social media world. We hope yes. everyone's able to check you guys out yeah. and the film playing at the festival, and also uh, you'll be able to check it out on, on the socials they provided. So thank you again, gentlemen, for coming today to talk about your film, Force Moses. Uh, such thank a pleasure. Thank you. Me.